Harry Potter, Christopher Columbus's, and all the ten other directors that directed it. Harry Potter in this, whatever the movie title is. You know, this is the longest running film series that I can think of that actually has movies that are either decent or good. It seems like other film trilogies that are ever this long is fucking Freddy Krueger, Halloween, and all that. Every single one just gets worse and worse and worse. But with this, you know, film series, it just, you know, progressively gets better and better. And really, there's not really a bad one you can say about them. They're, they're all pretty enjoyable. So I'm going to go through every single one and give basically my rough opinion about it and uh, see how that works. But before I get there, I just want to bring up the main criticism of Harry Potter and basically give it a slap in the face. Last year, there's a shitty movie called Funny People. The second I saw the trailer, I was like, this looks unbelievably unfunny. Because I really hate Judd Apatow movies. And at the end of one of the trailers, Jonah Hill out of nowhere goes... Hey, I saw the new Harry Potter. Uh, that guy's getting old or something. I don't remember. He said something really stupid, but his point was Daniel Radcliffe is getting too old for the character of Harry Potter. And that seems to be the big criticism of Harry Potter. Well, couch, once those two little legs come down, you know it's on, right? Now, if you don't like Harry Potter or whatever, for, you know, okay, you know, all right, awesome. I don't care. But. But if the criticism is because Daniel Radcliffe's getting too old for the character, it, it just really pisses me off because I hate when a group or a large group of people believe a certain thing, but it's unbelievably wrong. Now, Daniel Radcliffe, the guy who plays Harry Potter, is born in 1989. And the recent Harry Potter movie that came out was in 2009. So that would make him roughly 19 to 20. The character he plays, Harry Potter, is 16 years old, so that would make him 2-3 to three years older than his character. Oh my god, he's getting way too old for that part. Two years? Whoa, that's a big deal. I love huge tits to play me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they cast people in the late 20s, early 30s to play us. Alright, anyways, on with the films. Okay, so... I saw the first one when I was really young, and I remember liking it, but I don't remember, like, really, like, oh, man, that was the greatest thing ever, but I did, I did really enjoy it, and it was definitely for kids and stuff, but, uh, yeah, the first one, it's, it's all right. I mean, now that looking back, it's kind of corny, and those little kids can't fucking act, and since they're British, I don't know what the hell they're saying half the time, so, yeah, it's good, and damn, I mean, a shitload of money. Alright, Harry Potter 2, this one and the first one always confuse me because they're like almost the same movie. I know they have the same director and that's probably why, but they like look the same and everything. It's just like the same movie. But if I had to pick what was the better one, this one's definitely better. It has a really good mystery and it all like builds itself up and it really, it's a really good plot. It doesn't really expand the story or anything, but it almost like everything that was wrong with the first one they fixed in this one and made it more, I don't know, action packed. Okay, Harry Potter 3. Now, with this one, either people had mixed feelings about or they just raved about it. Mo this is the highest rating from Intermovie Database to every movie site. The highest rated Harry Potter. Some regarded as, like, like really, really good. Me, when I first saw it, I had mixed feelings. I mean, the fucking end, he just flies up in the air and, like, freezes. Like, huh, it's over? What? Didn't make sense. And Sirius Black? Like, like it was, really, it was a really good twist that he turned out to be a good guy, but, like... Why did they make him, like, so creepy and everything if he was a good guy the whole time? But what it's good about it, it kind of prepares us for the other ones, because the other ones are almost like this one where they're new. See, the first two are all campy and kid-like and bright and fun, but this one just, out of nowhere, just dark for no reason. The kids are like assholes in this movie. Hermione's punching people. But it almost was like what we needed, because the other ones are dark and everything. I don't know. But, yeah... It's, I still kind of mix about it, but it's, it's definitely on the good part of my mixed feelings about it. It's definitely not a bad film, but it's just different and maybe not necessarily a good way, but it did good for what is to come in the next ones. And the time travel aspect in the movie, really sweet, even though you're kind of watching the same fucking scene again. Anyways, yeah, um, it's kind of different, but if you do or don't like it, I understand. Harry Potter 4. This one made me really like Harry Potter again. Like, after I saw the third one, I had mixed feelings when I first saw it. But I saw this one, I'm like, oh yeah, that's the Harry Potter I know. It was like, 
we got back to the basics in a way, but we did like a really cool, awesome thing. Try was a tournament was really fucking tight. And this is where I like Robert Pattinson. He's just like, ugh, too fucking popular now. And he's just like totally different person. He was good in this movie. He did really good acting. Fucking Twilight movies. Oh, just fucking terrible. This is where I like Robin Pattinson. He's pretty good. And fucking Harry's hair. Why is it so fucking long? I don't know. Yeah, but this one, it's pretty tight. Uh, Triwizard of Tournament's really sweet. Except kind of the maze was kind of boring. Meh. But got Voldemort back. Got the story fucking going. And the story decided, hey, it's going to be like Voldemort coming back and he's going to take over the world. <laughs> but hey, yeah, it's pretty good. No more dicking off now. Now the story's getting pretty serious. Harry Potter 5. Kind of a big difference between 2 to 3 and then 4 to 5. This one has a different feeling. But as the movie went on, I, I accepted it. And um, now I'm really, I am love this style, how it is. And this is going to be the, you know, the next uh, 6, 7, and 8. They're going to be just like this. So, you know, you get used to it. What I really like about it, it has uh, more of the real world. The thing I like most about Harry Potter was when they, when they fucked around in like London in the real world not in the magical world because it's not that amazing you know you know you see a, wi a wizard sees another wizard fucking do something with his wand it's like who gives a shit like but when a human being sees it it gets fucking pretty serious so it was pretty cool um this one was pretty realistic and Harry was pretty emo the entire time Umbridge was a fucking bitch man I think this was like PG or something how the fuck without her like how do they make her such a bitch yet being like PG? Like, how do they, you know, there's only so far you can go, but they went as far as they could, and damn, she was fucking bitch. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I really notice in all these, though, every single movie, Malfoy becomes more of a little bitch. Like, he's not even, like, dramatic. But he gets dramatic in the sixth one, so we're gonna go over that. Harry Potter 6. Not much happens in this one, but I think I like it the best. Malfoy becomes his roots again, where, like, you know, he's a badass. Fucking the third one came by, he was a bitch, he got punched by Hermione. Fourth one, he was, like, just a goober. Fifth one, he was a goober. And, like, a little, like, pawn of umbrage. But this one, he goes back to his roots, where he's a fucking bamf. And, <laughs> damn, that scene on the train was like, oh, fuck, when he kicked Harry in the face. That's some pretty hard shit. And once again, fucking PG, how do they do that? How do they fucking do it without getting too far? Baltimore's past was pretty cool, but I wish they went in more. I don't know if they do more in the books, but definitely that was fucking interesting. Um, yeah, that's something I really like to d delve deep in more. I know he's not the main character, but still, it's pretty interesting. But I don't even know why he's an evil bastard. He just was born that way. He's just a weird fucking kid. It's definitely the funniest and at the same time the darkest of all of them it's kind of weird how that works but yeah um yeah not much happens in this but they just really like throw out shit like Ginny and harry when did that happen just this movie just like oh yeah we like each other now like huh random but i guess they're a thing now yeah not much happens in this one it was funny it was interesting but it, it was basically like hey it's the last time we're gonna be at hogwarts so let's just hang out let's just fuck off and then the ending, that was pretty dramatic with Dumbledore and shit like that. How do they get away with PG? Eh, well, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it's a pretty pretty different film series. Um, it's, yeah, I like them a lot. Um, not necessarily a big fan, but it's something, you know, oh yeah, another Harry Potter come out, I'll go see it. You know, because you know you're always going to get something at least good. Even if it's, like, somehow magically bad somehow, I don't even know how, but... It's still enjoyable because you know the characters, you know what they're gonna do, you just know them. It's like you're, they're your friends, you know. It's pretty, uh, it's it's cool how they, it's pretty good writing how they do that and stuff. So yeah, that's the Harry Potter film series. I would give them all sevens in the seven area, seven to eight. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty good. So can't wait for the seventh one to come out. Hopefully that looks pretty tight. I have something worth living for.